What's up guys, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be doing the Memphis Grizzlies 2020-2021 season preview and predictions. So without further ado, let's get into their 2019-20 recap. So in the 2019-20 draft, they drafted John ja Morant second overall. Um, and he was really good for them immediately. They were a surprise playoff contender. They were the eighth seed and held that spot for most of the playoff or most of the season and then lost it once the play in tournament started and the bubble and all that. Um, but yeah, they came in ninth in the West. Jaw won rookie of the year. It was a pretty positive year. They were definitely they definitely exceeded expectations and yeah, it was all good. The only bad thing is Jaron Jackson Jr. got injured in the play in tournament or the bubble, I forget, but he tore his ACL, I believe, is a pretty serious injury, and he's still not back from that yet. So looking at what they did this offseason, uh, they drafted Desmond Bain 30th overall, which usually I don't like talking about draft picks because I don't really know that much. I don't, I'm not a big draft guy, more of an NBA guy. But he, I've actually heard a good bit about, he's a really strong, kind of like a two guard to three guard, like a smaller, small forward, but like mostly a two guard. He's like 6'5", I think 6'6". Six, six. Um, yeah, he's just really strong. I could see him being a really good defender. Uh, he's a good off-ball shooter and off-ball ha ball handler. And that sounds weird, but like when the ball is swung to him, he's good at attacking the defense. So pretty good pick for them. And I just like I've heard really good things about him. So the value at the 30th pick is pretty good. And he already seems just seeing him play in the beginning of the season. He already looks like he could be a rotation player in the NBA already. So if you can get a rotation guy at the 30th pick, that's a win. So good for them. Um, so other players, they didn't really do much in free agency. They signed some undrafted uh, free agents like Killian Tilly um, leaving. No one's really leaving them either. Biggest one is Josh Jackson, but staying for them. Uh, so Grayson Allen is on this team, and he was traded in the Mike Conley trade um, with Utah. And he's been pretty good for them as like a off-ball two next to Ja. He's a really good shooter, uh, can handle a little bit. Um, defensively he's okay but his shooting is the main thing he's really good at that just a pretty good score next to jaw and he spaces the floor next to him so pretty useful to have um yeah just floor spacing and if he can get better on the defensive end and just a better ball handle in general but right now like what for what he is he's pretty good um dylan brooks who is a three and d guy for this team i'm not a huge dylan brooks fan my thing is i, I like the player like i think he's talented enough but he's just too excited to shoot the ball i guess like he has a little bit of marcus smart in him or not even a little bit a lot of marcus smart in him like he loves taking the shots that your number one option should take and he kind of thinks he's a number one option caliber player like just watch him play the next time and you'll see like he does a lot of things that you wouldn't really ask guy who mostly plays off ball to do like he loves being the ball handler and pick and roll and pulling up from mid-range and I understand he's not bad at those things, but he's definitely not good enough to be doing it as often as he does. So that's my issue with Dylan Brooks. Um, another player, Kyle Anderson. He's a super weird player. He's like a small forward, and he like on paper he doesn't look like he'd fit in the NBA at all. He's a bigger small forward, with really slow feet, and not a shooter at all. So it just seems like he's not very switchable, and he's not a good shooter, so why would you want him? And I don't know what it is, but this guy just sticks in the league and makes an impact. Like, he is slow-footed, but he plays angles and plays at a weird speed that defenders can't really, like... It's like he always has defenders on his hip. He's really good at getting in front of defenders, and he's really good around the rim. Just a really crafty guy, really good passer for a small forward. Just like a weird, crafty player who plays his brand of basketball and just like does it really well. Like he doesn't play modern at all. He plays really slow, really just like methodical. Get to my spots, make the good pass. And on defense, he's passable. So yeah, good player for them. A decent scorer and passer. Um, another player, Tyus Jones, their backup point guard, who he's kind of getting overpaid a little bit. He got a big contract last season, and he's been good for them. Um, yeah, he's just a good backup point guard. He's a pretty good passer, pretty good shooter, kind of just good at everything. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. This team has three guys from the Duke championship run. We'll get to Justice Winslow later. But, yeah, Justice Winslow, Grace Allen, and Tyus Jones. But, yeah, he's just a good backup point guard. To have. Um, the next player, like I talked about, Justice Winslow, who was traded along with Andre Godala and Jay Crowder. Yeah, from this team. Um, and 
he was like the main thing of that trade and he has kind of been weird where he's definitely has talent and he showed signs in Miami but he hasn't developed into a player that most people thought he would be so he's kind of a disappointment but still has some upside as like a good 3 and D guy if he could get his three point shot a little more consistent because he's really athletic really good on defense um kind of has some ball handling ability like a pretty good passer and just running the offense he's actually pretty good at that like he played point guard for Miami a little bit last season and the season before that so he's an interesting player I still think that there's a spot for him where he could be really effective it's just tough because he's not a great shooter and you primarily want him to play off ball which isn't great if he's not a good shooter so we'll see with Justice Winslow Jonas Valanciunas uh he's was traded with the Mike the Marcus Gasol, yeah, the Marcus Gasol trade. He was traded from Toronto, and he's really good. I like Jonas Valanciunas. He doesn't fit perfectly in the modern day just because he's kind of a big who can score around the rim, and he's not super switchable. But for this team at the moment, since they don't have championship aspirations for just winning regular season games, he's pretty good. He can have like a 20 and 10 night pretty easily. And yeah, he's just he can put up points around the rim, really good rim, uh, like scoring around the rim, really good rebounder. Uh, pretty good defender on other bigs and protecting the rim so he's just a skilled big not like skilled outside of what a big normal like not like a Jokic or a um, Sabonis but like a big that like a traditional skilled big like Enos kind of Enos Cancer type um, so another player Brandon Clark who was also drafted last year he was a later pick like 15th I think from uh, Gonzaga and he was really good for them his minutes has kind of gone down this year I, I don't really know what that's about I assume he'll get his minutes back but he seemed to be a pretty good third option on this team besides Jaron Jackson and John Morant um, yeah he just really good at scoring on all three levels on offense that's where he's mostly impactful his offensive game is really good he's really athletic really good finishing around the rim like good lob threat very fast like good at getting up and down the court and a pretty good catch and shoot three-point shooter just a really good offensive player to have off ball like he's really good at cutting um yeah just a lot of good things off ball he does defensively you would like for him to get a little better uh he's just weird like i think he'll be a good defender because he has all the tools like he's the right bot like he has a switchable frame and he's athletic and he can stay in front of guards like he's quick enough to it's just he doesn't have the defensive instincts yet so i think with time he'll get that but he is an older rookie so it's a little concerning but yeah he's a really good value pick for what they got him for and we'll see i think his minutes will go up again but they've been kind of inconsistent this year so we'll see about that um so getting into the two main pieces of this team jaron jackson jr um i really like jaron jackson jr i didn't like him coming out of the draft but that was just a bad pick by me he's a really good floor spacing five um they play him at the four but i think they should probably move him to five once he puts a little bit more size on him and just learns how to not foul as much as he does but he's a really good rim protector really good defender can switch on all five positions and offensively he's really good too really great catch and shoot three pointer uh, three point shooter can run off screens and shoot threes like just his three point shot is really good for someone at his height like it's super movable like it's not like he has to be set he can like run around and just throw it up like it's very quick a lot like a guard shot he has like a very he's a pretty skilled guard like air skilled big he's in that vein that I was talking about with like the Sabonis is Jokic Anthony Davis is of the world where I could see him being a big who can pass a little bit dribble the ball score and transition just a very skilled athletic big and i think with him the potential is kind of endless for what he could be like he's already averaging 19 and 10 and i feel like his offensive game is still pretty raw so like if he could just get more skilled at like dribble handoffs and just backing people down and just put more weight on him so he could actually do that and like be physically imposing i think he could be a really good offensive player for them and right now he's just like a good offensive player and a really good defensive player um the one thing he needs to work on defensively is he needs to stop fouling as much as he does he's a really bad uh, really bad about that like he'll foul out of games often he'll um just get three fouls within like the first quarter of a game and just have to like sit and like i i just hate when players do that when you do that you're like limiting how good you can be because you're just not going to play the same way like when you're even when you're on the court because like first you're going to miss minutes because you have three fouls but when you get back on the court you're going to be less aggressive you're just going to play more hesitant so i don't love 
that he does that and he needs to fix that to really become an elite defender on that end. Um, so then the star on this team, Ja Morant. Uh, yeah, Ja's great. He's really good, um, really good at getting to the basket. He's really good at, he's really athletic, obviously, has a great first step, but he's really good around the rim. Like, I think that's where he's best. He's a high flyer, so he can, and he has good body control. So when he's in the air, he can contort his body and finish in multiple ways. He's a really nice floater. Um, the shooting could get better. He isn't bad, and he's understanding of his limitations. Like, he doesn't jack up, like, six or seven a game and only make two like he only takes like one or two open threes a game um and he usually makes at least one of them so his percentages don't seem bad on three but he definitely could get more uh aggra- i wouldn't want to say aggressive just he could definitely work on his shot more to where it could be more of a weapon than instead of just a open catch and shoot guy um and he, but yeah just getting to the lane he's really good really great passer just really great at reading defenses and like taking what they give you and yeah he just gets he gets the defense on its heels like he's good at just getting to the paint so the defense has to like kind of um swarm him or just condense around him so he could kick it out and just gets the offense going so as an offensive player he's really good and defensively too he's really good against other guards um the only thing that scares me about him and i know it's a weird thing to be scared about but his injury he already is injured right now he injured himself against the atlanta hawks it was a really bad ankle sprain luckily nothing was broken it was just a bad ankle sprain but yeah he's just he the way he plays is kind of reckless like he lands heavily on one foot after a dunk like he'll slam dunk and then like put all his weight on one foot landing and it's like the way he uses his body like he's so reliant on his athleticism that it just reminds me of players like john wall and Derek Rose and just guys who like their lower bodies gave out on them by the time they were 25 and it's just tough for me to like not see a injury coming like every time I watch him I'm just like praying he doesn't get injured because like just the way he plays and his like slim frame the way he like throws his body around it's just bound to happen if you play 72 games especially as much as the Grizzlies are relying on him so yeah let's get into that the prediction for this team I like this team I think the young town is great with Jaw and JJ. Um, and I think with those two, you have future championship contention in you if they can stay healthy and keep building on their game. But this season, I don't see it. And I hope they don't push too hard to make the playoffs because the West is just uber talented. There's so many teams fighting for those eight spots that even if you're talented, it's not just a for sure you're getting in. Or even if you were good last year, it's not a for sure you're getting in. And this team is going to rely so heavily on jaw he's already out right now so this team is going to be bad for a few weeks but once jaw comes back they're going to be really relying on him on him again and i don't know when jay jaron jackson jr is coming back yeah I don't, like his timetable i think is a little farther down the line so it's just tough for me to put them in the playoffs when the west is so talented and how much they're going to be relying on jaw and jaron jackson once he comes back um yeah so I had this team about at the 10 spot in the play-in tournament. I don't see them making the top seven, and I don't see them winning in the play-in tournament and making the playoffs. So that's what I think of the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.